So welcome back. We are uh, up here at actually Grant and Spence's place by Montezuma. He's YouTubing himself already. <laughs> we are uh, we're gonna do a pretty good sized tile job for these guys here. Uh, quite a bit of pipe to go in. I think they even got more coming, but uh, yeah, there, there's there's a few rolls that we're gonna have to string through. Been a big moving day. I didn't film any of the moving day. Uh, had a heavy hauler move up the quad. Grant pulled up the plow. Spence came up in my truck in the tile stringer. And uh, we put the tile truck to work, bringing up the 6430, the 8-inch center that we're gonna need, and uh, Scrappenstein, which is my uh, trench closer. It is unbelievably cold, so we're gonna get this thing bundled off, or bundled off, broken off of here real fast. Then we're gonna move into the shop, change the boots, I'm thinking I'm going to do like pretty probably a pretty long video this whole project start to finish from one aspect to the other How are you going to do your videos? Are you going to do kind of like multiple daily videos or how are you doing it? I'm going to throw it all into one big one. You're going to do one big one That's too? That's what I do. Yeah. We're going to have a big video it'll, off. It'll only take us two days, right? Yeah, it should just two days. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to get this off and we're going to get in the shop. Tractor in here and barely any space. So break time, we came out to, uh, actually this spring, we were out here uh, trying to find where this main's at. You wanna uncover this? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So see, if you dig, if you dig back here just a little bit, yeah. there's a slit in that top, right there. So Grant found it, old clay tile. That's why it's actually called tile. Now it's a plastic tube, but this is old school technology. We're going to abandon all of his previous tile, and uh, which it's old clay tile, instead of trying to connect onto it. And we're just going to put install all new. So for the move up here, I uh, just assembled this plow a little bit. Uh, the GPS arm, it came off so it wasn't bouncing or rattling down the field. So Grant's being super careful with. Pulled it up here with the 4 inch boot on and Grant's going to be installing 8 inch mains so we got to switch to the 8 inch boot. So we're back out here first thing this morning, shuttling all the eight inch that's been delivered. Sounds like Grant's dad's bringing some more eight inch up here. And uh, we'll kind of give you guys an overview of the project. But we'll get a drone up in the air and show you the field that we're gonna pattern tile so you guys can kind of see how the whole process goes. Okay, drone up in the air. So the, we ended up tackling uh, four kind of fields. This big one here is a 22 acre field. Uh, give or take a little bit. It was the first field that we did. You're going to see we had some struggles with the main, but over there on the top of it, you can see there's like a little two acre field kind of tucked into the corner. In the middle there, there's a terrace below that was like nine acres. And then we ended up on the far field, which is kind of in the upper left hand corner for you guys. It ended up being the last field that we were in. And we did somewhere around 30 acres of that. Uh, right here is a really good close up look of the nine acre piece. Above the terrace, uh, Grant said that he's going to leave that one alone, maybe for a little while, maybe come back and do it at a later time. But really just focusing on the bottom ground because it didn't perform real well this year. And then there's another good look at the, uh, I think he called that like a 40, and I think we end up doing about two-thirds of this field. Uh, we kind of stay off of the right-hand side of it, which is actually as it kind of starts to go up the hill. So Spence and Grant rented a little Bobcat 12,000 pound machine. I think it's like a 50 or something. I don't know. 50. To use uh, Spence's big 
Blank belt's back over there, but the bucket's too big to be doing start holes. You can honestly do it, but I think you'd crush the pipe with the weight of the machine. So a little excavator for the start holes. I think Spence is gonna be digging all the start holes, but I am gonna go uh, work on an outlet while Spence clears a few more trees. So this is a pretty big outlet hole here actually. We're gonna run two 40 foot, two 20 foot sticks. So 40 foot of double wall because we're pretty deep actually. Uh, there's kind of a, a, a dike or a, I don't know, a levee I guess you can maybe call it running along this creek here. Uh, and we're gonna have to bring it to about the edge of this field right here where the eight inch is gonna be. So it's downhill so I'm going the opposite of what I want for grade. So we're gonna have to cut pretty deep. This is Buck. How we doing, bud? We're at, uh... Is it going downhill, or is, it, is the number getting smaller as you come my way? Yes. Okay, that means we got slope. All right, keep a, keep a measure in there. So we got our dual wall in. We'll uh, put the animal guards and stuff in there now. We backed the plow into the hole. Uh, did a survey run. When I forgot the GoPro in the mini here. Uh, scratched in the line to lay things out. We were thinking we would just have Spence uh, hook on with his link belt there in the front of my uh, quad track. Ended up pitching the plow down, which basically you dig it down in itself and uh, set a survey line. And I think I made it to about 60 inches and could pull very easily by myself at 55. And this main's gonna go in at 48 to the bottom. So we shouldn't need Spence, fingers crossed. This will be a little bit quicker. Uh, let's put, uh, let's get to putting some pipe in the ground. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Take this, get that over there, push her down through the boot, and we'll get to the dual wall. Okay. So does, don't go through the feeder. We're not gonna use the feeder on that. Nope, just go down the boot. that strung out right there that is our eight inch main really about 800 feet because that strands 850 feet when we went through the whole strand had a little bit extra but that's about uh 850 feet through there and so ben's gonna pull her we're ready to install here we go we're staying on the pipe ben's gonna pull her oh shit Oh my god! <laughs> Does he have it in four wheel drive? I'm just joking. So that didn't work. Um, the quad sat too long, melted snow and stuff, and basically turned itself into a sheet of ice underneath the track. So we just spun immediately. Need a hook now. This link belt's a 210, not a 220. All right, just keep that cable out of my tracks. Just follow the middle. You're good to go, Spence. We're ready. We're ready, ready.
What's going on? Well, right here's a dip. But we can't get through the dip. And so we're literally spinning like crazy. Spencer's digging, trying to get through it. If we can get through this little dip, it, it's going through there, it looks like, on the monitor. So. You'll have to watch Grant's channel for uh, that mess that we just went through. We made it to about 56 inches and then started ice skating and really had to drag our way out. Really, really had to drag our way out. Holy crap, there goes the last. Oh man, that was, that was the hardest pull we've ever done. By far, by far. What'd you think of that pull, Mr. Zip? It was fun. That was a hard one. <laughs> Wait, so down there is twisted? You're good, no, you're, you're perfect good now. You're so perfect. The animal guard is... The, I put the animal on. guard in line with the yellow stripe. So we want the oh, yellow okay. stripe to be yeah. up so that animal guard is in there, right? Okay, so in my snowboard backpack, four headlamps, in my maroon backpack. So we've gotten three out of the five mains done. There's two more big mains to go. It's getting dark on us. Daylights are short. So we're gonna clean this boot out, go dig the start holes for first thing in the morning. Things are going decent. We got I mean conditions are tough, but they're going decent. We'll get this aid in, then we'll quit probably a little bit early tomorrow, and then first thing Sunday morning actually, we'll go straight to pulling laterals, which would be good. So we'll pick back up with you in the morning as we get ready to pull, uh, pull some more eight. So we're back to work this morning. We've got our first casualty of the day as we get ready to pull the first big pull. Battery's dead. New battery, is that the new one in there? It's a new one. It's a little, I'd say a little weaker than the old one, just a tad bit weaker, but it should be good. actually got some good length to it and it kind of goes uphill so we really want to do it before uh before the frost starts to melt on top and get slippery so what i'm doing is actually remarking the main just got the plow down a little bit scratching it in because where the design had it it's kind of down in this ditch and we got to go through a little bit of a hump so if I scooted it over just a little bit, 15 feet, that it'd actually get rid of a, a deep spot pull. And it won't affect the design. No, because yesterday we were having a lot of trouble. So if we can pull it in this morning, how do you think the pull is gonna go? Should go good. So as long as the ground's frozen, we'll pull a lot better. You know, did you tell them about yesterday when? They saw it yesterday. Well, yeah, yesterday when we were slipping. <laughs> Good, hopefully, like last night, that pull, we last pull we did. Smooth. Smooth. Yeah. Because the ground started to firm back up. And this isn't as deep as the uh, first run, right? No, we won't get as deep as the first run. The first okay. run had, uh, had the deepest, hardest pull we had. So, that was fun. Yeah. This one will be 46, 48 inches the entire run. Okay. So we're in good shape. Not too bad. Let's roll. So this here is the difference uh, 
in between having a little bit of slop on top and uh, not having it. Actually, probably don't even need Spence on the front of me right now. We just be able to pull it right in. Uh, it's going good. Just once you get that little bit of thaw on top of the little bit of frost, you can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere at all without something like that on the front of you. Spence and I worked on this last night. We had to go through a couple berms, but we just need to go a little bit further because we're putting two sticks of double wall together to make 40 feet. Give it a little extra strength, and that way if they uh, don't happen to, if there's like saplings that start to grow here, that they won't grow down and just plug up these uh, up these pattern runs because the sticks are non perf Okay, we got our last run here. Should be a good one. We got all the mains installed. This was the last one we did today. Came right down here. And there's also another main we didn't tie them together that came right down here. And then we have two sticks dumping here. And then Spence completely rebuilt this berm back up to kind of hold back the water, build back the creek a little higher. And then it'll look like this pipe is really far underground, but that's because we're going to be standing up on the berm here. And there are those two outlets come out right there, and those are dumping. What do you think? Should, there's no water coming out yet. I know. Ben's head back with the quad track. We're head back to the shed. He's gonna switch over those boots. And then we're also gonna get his little 6430 set up to, for uh, markers for the line. So he has a little homemade rig. We're gonna put in the, uh, it's gonna put like basically a little rip in the ground every 30 foot so he can see where he's gonna drive. Basically, his auto steers broke on his tractor right now. So that's what we're gonna use kind of for guidance lines for now. So. That should work good, and uh, we're gonna call it quits a little early today, and then get started on mains tomorrow, most likely. Or get started on uh, start, get started on laterals tomorrow, most likely. So the next thing that we need to do is actually start laying out the pattern. So the next thing that we need to do is actually start laying out the pattern. To do that, I got this homemade scraper little deal again. The, co the compass is back in here. Uh, and on track. Grant's probably gonna do this. I'm actually gonna take off here to go to uh, Thanksgiving. And then I'll be back here again tomorrow. So Grant will be laying out the runs for the 22, or for the, yeah, it's a 22 acre field, I believe. And every 30 foot. That way Spence can maybe dig a few start holes so he can be ahead of me. That way, first thing in the morning, uh, tomorrow, we can start pulling pattern. Well, I didn't work in semi-frozen ground. 
can't say I'm shocked by that one. Suspense is going to start digging a few start holes for tomorrow. Uh, since it's a 30 foot pattern, you can just count 12 rows of corn and scoot over. Uh, that'll work. I'm taking off. I'll see you guys back here first thing in the morning. So we've been going decent. Everybody's starting to learn their uh, their grooves. Buck's now a tile stringing man. We had one spin out, which was a little weird. I thought we were completely done for the day. Uh, you, if it, if it gets sloppy on top, you, you just can't pull it. We probably said that like seven times in this video by now. But we waited a little bit, and now we can keep going. It's actually surprised me quite a bit and uh we're probably past the 10,000 foot mark this is what i get into for issues here right at the end of the run there's little pipes sticking out of there but we just uh spun it's like not even biting in ice probably because it's like a bare spot here that's what happens and then you know bull so grant's gonna bring his 8110 up here and uh get this pulled out. up here okay this is the back field or back part of the field the 40 acre field uh you can kind of see the one obviously dark strip that's one of the mains and then right along the tree line there is another main grant's got really a pretty farm here flying the drone first thing in the morning the nine acre piece you can see where the uh main is for it there's the 22 acre piece kind of how far we got the first day of pulling laterals uh then there's the two acre piece with its main it everything ended up going in really well once we got the hang of dragging us along spence was actually in the 6430 uh trying to close the trenches back up a little bit it was working somewhat but with the frost first thing in the morning we still had frost in the ground here we had frost at one point it came back out but it was throwing pretty big chunks it was closing up uh better than kind of leaving it open they get to come back later on buck First thing in the morning was his job was to shuttle tile down from the shop. Just using the tile cart, pick, Spence's dually pickup truck. Didn't put the top on the trailer, and so he could just go grab one, drive it down here. Uh, we thought that would be faster than actually putting them onto a trailer and bringing them over here. And it was. Buck in the morning got up early and was able to get the tile that we needed for the day to the field. And then here, uh, everybody was shuffling things back to the field. So Grant would show up again in the morning here with the quad, the tile plow, and be ready to go. No. There's a last right bucket here. Will Where? The window if you let it on the track. Well, there's a <laughs> pond right there. <laughs> Put it in the pond. Hold on, Grant's trying to burn down his side by sides. <laughs> Side-by-side smoking in here, there's like a fire. How do you lift the seat? What's smoking? The side-by-side, -side, there's like fire inside side-by-side. -side. It's not bad right now. But... How do you lift the seat? Hey, how do you get the seat off again? Middle, middle of the seat, there's a little latch, like an ATV seat. Lift up and pull out. Here. <laughs> No, right there it is. See it? It's that one. There you go. Yeah, she's on fire, dude. <laughs> it's a, it's Jesus. There you go. What's funny is my buddy's uh, Raptor three weeks ago burned down driving through corn stalks. Raptor, <laughs> a Raptor. <laughs> 
Is that the closest you've ever seen to something burn that? Well, you got your combine mm -hmm. on fire multiple times. Yeah, we're, we've done pretty good on catching stuff on fire. I like how Grant's idea was, I'll just put it in the pond. Good morning, everybody. Get up on stop. Start screaming a fire siren. Wee, 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 wee. You want a bottle of water? Yeah, that's Here. Yeah, it here. Okay, I'm gonna play with uh, Spence's excavator. It was still on fire, I bet I could smother it out with this. Wanna go a little whistling diesel? <laughs> I need to call the banker. Dang it. So, Tuesday morning, it's supposed to be a really nice day. Oh, I'll turn that down. The guys went back up north last night, so they're gonna be a little bit later getting here this morning. We ended up working a little after dark last night, and uh, Grant's little two acre field, uh, kind of across the way from that 22 acre field. We ended up finishing up. It was like eight runs, but they were shorter runs, so we knocked it out. We are now on to an eight acre patch and then on to the big field. Don't think we'll get done by Wednesday. The kind of goal was to be done by Wednesday, but we're going to give her a real good shot. Enjoy this nice weather we've got coming and uh, through some ground. that we're about to pull here and we're gonna actually hook to this one because it's slippery right through this area this is a sacrificial four so there's the main here's some trees that grow in a drainage ditch that way that somehow trees can't make it to this main the main's quite a ways away already but you put a piece of pipe in between the main and here and that way if the trees do run, grow this far they'll go into a, a, a four that you can that you can basically sacrifice to keep the roots out of your mane. Oh, he's got it. Eventually, I'd love to tile this whole piece. This stuff is really good drained soil. It's kind of like a brownish, it's not as black soil. It just drains super good naturally. Eventually, we'll probably tile it, but it's just the yield you're, the yield enhancement you're gonna get off this is nothing, is not as much compared to tiling those bottoms. So we're just tiling what's important for now. Maybe in a year or two, I'll come back and we'll do this. up to plug your video game just, just drop her in the top here grant just drop it in the top we can put it wherever you want hook it wherever you want so grant has a farm sim game coming can you say call it a farm sim game I have a, a mobile farming simulation game. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually, how you would learn that. I know. When's it come out? Um, it'll be Q1 2023. We had to delay it a little bit here. Okay. But Q1 2023. So it's an Iowa-based map. It's all it's all American. So we're recording audio for it right here. I got the Quadtrek mic'd up. The thing you learn is... You, you can keep going. 
Where you going to go to as we... Okay. You get it? Where you are, you tell me. Yeah, yeah, you, no, you're good. I got it mic'd. Okay. But the thing you learn is that on the newer quads, quad tracks, all the new stuff, they do not sound good with depth. And so what I'm trying to do is get Ben's quad track that has doesn't have as much emission stuff, sounds a lot better, and we'll kind of mix those sounds in with some of the newer sounds we got. We went and mic'd up all the new quads already. They just don't sound that good at all. So this will give us a way better sound. So the video game's name is what? American Farming. It's okay. called American Farming. And so basically the case tractors will be sound from this. This, this yep. Yeah, so Grant's got kind of a cool story. True first generation farmer. Any family farms? Uh, family farms in Northern Iowa, but I'm not all affiliated with their farm right now. At all. So, yeah. so uncles and aunts and stuff like that. But you have a YouTube channel that's based around farm simulation games, which is the squad, right? The squad, yeah. Squad. And that's kind of how I got my start into farming is that YouTube channel and then help me buy a little bit of farm ground and kind of start off real small farming here. And then you document that on what's your farm channel? Uh, farm channel's name is Grant Hilbert. It's just my name. Okay, yeah, so. that's what I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. So Ben's, uh, this is a wet hole. It's not a wetland, but we can't farm through it. I don't know what it is. It's like a spring that comes out of the side hill here. And so I told Ben, make some passes really tight through it and close to it so we can farm through this thing. Driest year and it'll still sit wet. Super weird. And it's on a, it's on a side hill right here. I really wonder how he's gonna be able to pull out of this. So we got two different runs going right through it here. Southeast corner of the farm to the northwest corner of the farm. So we're kind of going on diagonal. This is pretty much a square 40 here. And there's, if you look on aerials, even back in the 1960s, 1950s, you can see the tile lines, the old clay tile lines. They run the exact same direction we're doing it. Besides they're probably 60 to 80 foot tile lines and they're buried deep in a bunch of old clay tile. And there's even clay tile that goes through here. Some of it we're seeing is like half clogged with mud and stuff. So this old tile system, it's just been 60, 70, 80 years since it's put in. It's really not doing much in this soil, specifically colo soil. Um, it needs tile, it needs tile. Guys say tile does magic on this type of bottom ground soil. So this, I'm just super excited to see what it does next year for yield. Because we're going right back to corn. Beans aren't as predictable as corn because August rains really make it up. Same with corn in July and August, you really need those rains. But it seems like beans, it could be a 20 bushel swing, which is actually a lot for beans either way, depending on if you get a lot of rain in August. So that's why I want corn, back to corn, it's a little more predictable. So that way I can see my spots, where we yielded bad, where the tile helped, stuff like that. So we're back here this morning after Thanksgiving. Gonna try and wrap up this project. We got a few oddball things to do. Uh, this run right here, there was an intake here because actually, oh, this is a pretty good hill here. That comes down, the intake was right here in this area. Uh, the creek is right on the other side of this berm. So we need to put a new riser in there. Otherwise, this will just turn into a little pond right here. Yeah, 
that big T. There she is. Okay. Use it like a spoonbill. Like so. down to two more first time well actually three more connections two more of them we've got to go splice the eight inch main spence first time he was digging touched it a little bit we got to go fix it that's actually back on the 22 acre field we got two last connections to make and actually grant uh when we started talking about this he asked me about these red tap tees and i said i hadn't seen them before but or i haven't used them before but uh, people talk about them like they're good, and we've been using them so far. I think they're pretty good. Do you like them so far? Uh, I think they're pretty well, solid. The only thing is, I only put like ten of the regular. You just put, ones. yeah. So well, I can more. tell you that from what I've used, these red ones are a heck of a lot nicer. But yeah, they look pretty neat. Like they they fall on the ground, but they're an internal snap-in deal, uh, central plastic. And then they clip in. Hold on, hold on. Tell me when you're there. Give us the action. And go. <laughs> it's so much nicer. With that connection that finished the job there so everything stayed on 30 foot centers uh tried to follow the same principles where the mains were about 60 feet away from the tree lines 30 feet away from that was a sacrificial four everything was on 30 foot centers four inch pipe on 38 foot centers uh this here is going into the two acre field where you guys the first field you saw was the 22 acre field should really really improve this farm i mean grant's got a really nice farm here should really produce the bushels now as we jump to this next field we've also capped all the runs so the laterals made it to where they're on this one they're going from the right hand side of your screen to the left hand side of the screen so that makes it easy we would then put like 130 foot away from the fence line or the edge of the field uh to also give that edge of the field drainage and then we pan towards the bigger one here this was kind of on angles. We snuck some of them up and around the corners where the tillage is being done. Either we left it alone, there was no tile going in there, or there's pattern that's working. All in all, fantastic project, and we really can't wait to see what kind of the yields that come off this farm for Grant. So we're moving everything back right now. Yeah, it's no. out, but that was a little too fast. <laughs> the project ended up being a little over 70,000 feet, uh, just shy of 100 start holes. So I think it went pretty darn good. What did, Spence, what did you learn? Or what were, you, My, what were your thoughts and what would you, what did you expect? Yep. Versus how it turned out, maybe what did you kind of like learn? My main job was digging the start holes, so that was good experience there. And we pretty much learned the confidence to do it and actually getting your hands dirty and doing it not watching on a video or just somebody telling you how to do it uh yeah so i i mean i i learned everything like the, the fun is well it was it was fun i was kind of a ditch uh ditch curse word yeah word um but anyways uh so that was which fun. is one of the most important jobs on the tile project yeah. and, and then it made it easier with the tap tees too oh yeah like i some guy was talking about how they cut it and then put the t in yeah. and i was like it seems like you're gonna have issues with connections. Maybe I'm wrong, no, but like yeah. that seems a lot tougher and stuff. So uh, that was fun, and then the design process too, getting your drainage coefficients. Like yep. at the start when we designed with Flowex, that was good too. Working out all that stuff. And I think well, the issue is is you're gonna be addicted to it now once you see how it actually improves that farm from what you had last year to this year. Yeah. It's uh, you're gonna to want to do it on every single piece of property you buy from now on. I know. So that's what I'm but, thinking. 
Grant's going to be doing a video on your channel. Yep. Yeah. Well, Spence, are you doing any videos? I actually, I'll have a farm improvement video. So it'll be some tiling, then I'm going to rip okay. out more trees. So I'll link both of those uh, videos down below when they go, they get their videos out. I'll probably have the first video out. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure out how that goes. You'll see it all linked and I'll update the cards and stuff like that. But go check theirs out. Pretty fun project. If Back guys, home. If you guys need tiling, contact yeah. this yeah. guy. So we'll, uh, we'll put some pipe in the ground. See you in the next one.